1.19 is an absolutely wild update. We got our first mob with a despawn animation that doesn't look like this. We got our first asexually reproducing mob, and we got all sorts of weird interactions between the new blocks and the old ones. And I want to show you all of these things and more, some wild things about this update, if you will. And I hope you all enjoyed this video. If you want to subscribe, did you know greater than 99% of house fires happen to people who aren't subscribed to the channel, which means that this is what hitting the bell looks like. And so with that said, let's jump straight into 12 weird things you might not have known. Uh, I love this style of video and it's fun to be back here because did you know that Skulk Vane is so much more powerful than you would guess? Looking at it on a surface, you might assume that it's like vines where it'd be washed away by water, but no, as you can see, Skulk Vane actually can be used to direct the flow of water, even allowing you to do stuff like this, literally cut it off at the source and move it around. And it's very strange and it honestly, it doesn't seem like this should be true, that this much water should be held in place by Skulk, but it absolutely is. It's really amazing also because it doesn't just work for water, it works for lava as well. Although your results may but <laughs> vary when you're using uh, something so flammable as your base. But still, isn't it incredible you can direct the flow of water and lava? Here is a really nice one I like that Adorable Ho has done. Look at this. I mean, the way that it's literally flowing along the sides there, it looks like it's on top of some invisible blocks, like some barriers or something. But nope, that is just the power that Skulk Veins can redirect flowing uh, water and uh, lava without being uh, destroyed, unlike vines, and unlike anything else in the natural world, um, besides maybe, uh, yeah, anything else in the natural world. Skulk veins are absolutely top-notch for that, on the levels of buttons or pressure plates. So next up here, we have Minecraft going real big on the LGBTQIA re <laughs> I don't think I can say that. Actually, you know, allies are reproducing asexually, so that is... Uh, the A in LGBTQIA, and therefore good job Mojang for the additional representation. Although, if you really think about it, Minecraft already has LGB and I mobs, if you really get down with it. And if you think about it, some villagers are T. If, you, if you're curious as to what I mean by that, you're gonna have to what, wait, think about it, see if you can work it out before the end of the video. But yeah, uh, here is a fun fact that you can do in 1.19.10 and beyond. If you're playing music, uh, here's a fun fact by the way, you need to be playing music. Uh, you know, allies have the exact same problem I have, where if they're not listening uh, to pig step, they just can't reproduce. So what you want to do is you want to use these amethyst shards onto the, your, your lovely uh, allies, and they will asexually reproduce. You could also call this duplication. Um, it's that there's lots of ways of doing it. But yeah, every single amethyst shard equals a new ally as long as you wait the minute time, which is to me what makes it breeding and not um, you know duplication. But still, it's pretty fun until your ally gets caught in the lava trap that you made earlier to show how cool skulk things are. <laughs> Poor ally. You know, I'm sorry, friend. You should come back here. Maybe, okay, you know, he's, he's gonna be fine. Speaking of things that are gonna be fine, did you know that allies were initially conceived of as a, uh, you know, they were conceived for the Never Update. This has been confirmed by Mojang themselves, and it's one of those uh, weird facts where, again, something that really would have felt quite strange as a Never Mob worked much better as a part of the World Update, in my opinion. Speaking of things that are wild, let's get in our chest boat, by the way, and let's let's sail over to the, the, the fourth wild thing about this update. Did you know that tadpoles in a bucket will never grow up? This is a really strange fact. I mean, again, if you place tadpoles in the wild, you know what happens? They grow up and they get older and, you know, all, all this stuff happens. But if you have tadpoles in a bucket, like I have right here, okay, there we go. Um, here is a crazy thing. If I activate our time machine and you see, <laughs> this is a fun feature, look, look at this. So if you see how many days are passing, if you see how much the tick speed is changing and all sorts of crazy stuff is happening, despite that, the bucket of tadpole will never age because tadpoles only age when they're outside of a bucket. This is kind of counterintuitive when you really get down to it because why should the tadpole not age while he's in a bucket? But ultimately it just makes sense from a gameplay perspective that they've decided, oh yeah, why should we have a mob age while it's in the inventory, the frog would have to jump out of the bucket. And so instead, we have tadpoles that can infinitely be left as tadpoles as long as you keep them in buckets, because that is how the natural world works. Speaking of the natural world, did you know uh, that mangrove swamps tend to spawn connected to oceans? It's a weird factor that has to do with how Minecraft's various biome selection tools work, but finding a mangrove swamp means you've got a better than average chance of finding an ocean. Likewise, if somehow you still haven't found one of these in your world and you want that delicious, Steak looking uh, your wood, 
uh, or I guess the meat looking uh, wood, or the wood looking meat, you could say. And um, then what you can do is you can sail over across the ocean, maybe using a brand new chest boat, until you find one of these lovely things. I uh, really do enjoy the fact that you can know certain biomes are going to be next to other ones, and I think mangrove swamps work quite well compared to the placement of other uh, places, because, you know, like mesa biomes have some issues with that sometimes. Speaking of biomes that have issues, the mangrove propagule is the first sapling that can be planted and grown underwater. This sounds crazy to believe. I mean, surely oak saplings would work? No, they do not. Acacia saplings, any other sapling does not work in water, but the mangrove propagule does. This is actually really strange and can be used to do all sorts of weird things if you place it a little bit deeper than you expect that you might be able to grow it. But yeah, uh, mangrove propagules grow from the water outwards, and so you get these beautiful trees that come out of water exclusively too, which is even weirder when you think about it. Um, there are so many strange things that you can do with this. I've, I've played around with it for a while, but for now, you just need to know that it's strange that this happens, huh? Speaking of strange things uh, that happen when you play around for too long, this is another strange thing. Mo this is our first time we've ever had Mojang directly encourage um, that uh, you actually take mobs between dimensions. The, the Never Update kind of encouraged the opposite, where it said, yeah, hoglins and piglins will not work in the overworld. You keep your never stuff in your never and your overworld stuff in your overworld, but the wild update is interesting because they've decided that... Uh, how am I gonna- I, I'll use the- I'll use the, the, the lovely grit slime ball. Um, this is the first update that has decided that you can actually bring things between dimensions and benefit from it. It's kind of nightmarish to do in practice sometimes. I- I feel like even if your frogs are right next to your never portal, which is, you know, it's a big if, you still have to kind of like slide them in the last bit, because otherwise you're standing in there and they stop caring. But still, you can now uh, get rewarded for taking uh, <laughs> these lovely frogs to the to the never with you. Come on, all get in here, buddies. How do you get rewarded? I'm glad you ask. All you got to do is throw some little frogs down there. And what's this? Are they going to start eating and pooping out frog lights? Yes, they are. I mean, apparently not actually. Okay, there we go. He ate one, and we got ourselves a pearlescent. Frog light. Ooh, look at the light that we now have available to us. Uh, this is a really cool feature, in my opinion. Uh, the fact that you can just have a magma cube spawner turn into uh, frog lights. It's really fun when it happens. It's kind of nightmarish to do a natural survival, in my mind. Um, I, I kind of enjoyed my process of doing it, though. So overall, I'd say nightmarish, but totally worthwhile. What is down here? Ooh, some, some extra frog lights for me. Speaking of extra frog lights, let's go to the final section. Because, um, yeah, isn't it fun, by the way, doing, doing one of these, uh, like, old-style, like, facts you didn't know video? I feel like, I feel like we're usually doing, like, so many. We're, like, d d diving into, like, 68 things, 45 things, 26 things you didn't know. You know, I like that we get a nice little, uh, baseline, because the next set of facts all take us to the deep dark and everyone's favorite structure, the ancient city. Side note, best thing you can do in an ancient city, make a, a little log flume for your boats. It's just so fun in my opinion. But yeah, the ninth, uh, the eighth wacky uh, thing about the wild update is that no one knows what this frame will do yet. I mean, it's possible people, it's not publicly no known, I should say, um, what this frame will do. Um, it could be some form of portal. I mean, it's called an ancient city portal. And uh, if so, it would be the first time uh, they added something without telling us. And it'd be like if they added an end portal with no further explanation. Imagine if never portals just existed in Minecraft one day and they're like, yeah, I don't understand this. And imagine if that happened with the end portal, but before it worked, before you could fill it up, that is what is happening here in the ancient city in some future update. We'll know, but for now we don't. Speaking of things we don't know, let's go for a little ride down our... <laughs> Isn't this just fun? Isn't this just beautiful? I don't know how you, you would not agree that this is the best way to get around your deep dark. But yeah, let's um, let me show you something crazy because the shield is actually immediately disabled by the Warden. That's right, the Warden is so powerful that it can disable even the one device in Minecraft that can block these things. Also, the Warden is the first fully blind mob Despite this major disability, he's also the scariest. <laughs> I actually think that's true. You know, what? I'm just saying, you gotta be more scared of to say. You, anyway, with that said, uh, the warden is the first naturally spawning mob that has an animation for spawning and despawning as well. This is one that I didn't like. You know, it, it, it's true, but you don't realize it till you see it. The warden is absolutely spooky. Also, the warden won't grant you the monster hunt hunter achievement slash advancement when you do manage to kill it. So, um, yeah, do you want to get that wonderful achievement? You want to get that wonderful advancement, you're not going to be able to. Also, I mean, partially because you can't kill him, but even if you do manage to, it's just not going to go well for you. As I can show you right here, this is... Okay, we got the deep dark effect yet? Nope, we're not here. 
Oh, I missed his- I missed his spawning animation. Oh, there he is! How did you spawn up there, buddy? So this is the warden, this is my shield, and as you can see, um, it's just- it just isn't doing anything for me. It is just- uh, the only thing saving me right now is that protection effect. He is whacking right through the shield in most cases. Side note, but bringing some frog lights with you to the ancient city, very smart idea. Allows you to see a little bit more when the darkness effect comes in. I'm just saying, the whole update ties together nicely if you really start thinking about it. Do you see that, by the way? Sonic Blast, shield is not even cared about. So yeah, if you can kill the warden, like hypothetically, you used a creative world built by your good friend Adorable Ho, and you use that uh, creative world to give yourself maximum <laughs> resistance so you could kill him, you know what? You don't get any advancements or achievements for it. Oh my god, I just killed you and you're already respawning? This is, this is why you gotta be cautious around these parts. So that has been 12 wild facts about the wild update. I hope you enjoyed it. But just for some bonus knowledge, none of these are about the wild update specifically, but I wanna share them anyway. First of all, the thing about the villager, a witch can be struck by lightning. And so there you go. Wow, interesting fact, right? Uh, second of all, we've got the fact that um, any one of these blocks right here, an enchantment table, a furnace, even a blast furnace, if you break them with your fist, you will get the item uh, drop back afterwards. This doesn't seem like it should be true, and I, it might only be bedrock exclusive, um, but if you break a furnace, you know, this this very stone-based block, that otherwise if it was just all the stone you'd craft into it, uh, you'd get nothing back, but if you break a furnace, you actually do get the regular furnace back. I've heard this is true for an enchantment table, and I don't- I, I haven't confirmed yet, and we're gonna find out right now what happens if we punch one of these exhausting boys all the way. The answer is you do get it back. It's weird that in your inventory, the enchantment table has no book on the top though, right? Like you can see, it clearly has no book. And then you place it down and the book just appears out of nowhere. Also the book seems to, well you know, we don't think about these things. What we do think about is that I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, like it if you did like it. Uh, again, like a nice little fun, old style, some facts you didn't know video. Um, share it if you really liked it. And subscribe perhaps if you're new around here so you can see videos like this one every single day on your channel. And as we discussed earlier, wow, what is that? There's some house pro fire prevention advantages. Um, yeah, warning, house fire prevention may not actually work. May just be a figment of speech by a Minecraft YouTuber.